just 500 feet above the slot machine capital of the world. A city better known for its one-armed bandits than its filmmakers. But true to form, somewhere down there, we might unearth a gentleman who would dearly love to hit the jackpot here in Las Vegas. He's the man behind such classic movies as the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed-up zombies, and the wonderfully titled Rat Thinker Boo Boo. Let's go say hello to Ray Dennis Steckler. <laughs> What's the actual appeal of them? What do I think my appeal is yeah. to, to the public? Uh, I hope it's originality. I hope when they see my movies they can say only one thing, that they've never seen one like it by anybody else or anything even close. I mean, that's what I strive for. I, I don't want to be like anybody else. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Look, then run for your life. Incredible is the word for the world's first monster musical. This was the first of a series of bizarre, imaginative, low-budget films that Ray Dennis Steckler made in the 1960s. From the music and horror mishmash of creatures to the childish slapstick humour of the Lemon Grove kids, they varied enormously. Steckler's number one rule was never to work with a script. The result is frequently chaotic. Films often start as one genre and end up as another. Sacre bleu! <coughs> The Thrill Killers, for example, begins as a modern-day murder mystery, but by the end it appears to be a western, with a cowboy and cop involved in the final shootout. Another Steckler trademark is the use of family and friends in his films. This is a taste of Rat Finker Boo Boo, made in 1965. Steckler's pal, rock and roll singer Ronnie Haydock, serenades Steckler's then wife, Carolyn Brandt. The thing is, I always thought that one day he would walk up to the Academy Award to pick up an Oscar. I always felt he could do it. Do you think there's still a chance? There's always a chance. So, how did potential Oscar winner Ray Dennis Steckler get his start in the movies? Let's go back to the beginning. His first film was Wild Guitar, and Ray was just 24 when he was given the chance to direct by an aging B-movie producer called Arch Hall Senior. It was a good experience for me because I couldn't really change anything in the script. He was right there all the time, and I found out that's not the way I like to make movies. I like to sort of make an adventure out of it and see what happens each day by just being there and letting things flow. But with Arch Hall, you just couldn't distract from one line of dialogue, no matter how bad it was. And uh, we managed to get a few things in it. Like, uh, we put an ice skating sequence in it. An ice skating sequence that works best because of Ray's suggestion that they use one spotlight for the scene. A technique that his cameraman, Vilmos Sigmund, initially disliked. I kind of kidded him and said, man, someday you'll win an Academy Award with a lot of flares in your lens. It's the newest thing. And of course, Easy Rider came out and everything was a flare a few years later. And then Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Was that the name of that movie? Yeah. Yeah. Was he, that the same, the guy? Yeah, he won the Academy Award for that. There were a lot of flares in that one. So, I like to think I, I sort of got him started in the right direction, you know. One good flare leads to another good flare. What happened after um, Wild Guitar? Did you return to a normal job or did you carry on making movies? Did I return to a normal job? I was working as a janitor then. Was that a normal job? <laughs> I was always cleaning up things. Uh, after Wild Guitar, now I made the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. 
I only know that something evil lies ahead for me. An unspeakable pit of dismal subhuman monsters who drew and shiver, moaning for the thrill of revenge. The world's first monster musical. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. That's, a, that's an incredible title. How did, how did you come up on that? Uh, I, I don't know. We're just trying to come up with something that, that, you know, we didn't have a big budget, so I thought maybe a big title might look a lot better on the marquee. Maybe people think we spent more money or something. Just as incredible as the title is the plot. Creatures tells the story of a carnival gypsy who has a passion for collecting acid-scarred zombies and hypnotizing innocent young men to kill on her behalf. Steckler's favourite actor, Cash Flagg, takes the lead role. He's also the gypsy's first victim. Pretty weird stuff, eh? And all this was shot without a script. People always ask me why I don't have a completed script. Well, every time we have a completed script, the movie never seems to get made because we can never afford to shoot what's on the script. You know, you need all these things, and you start spending all this time locating these things that you need for the movie, and by the time you get all that done, it's too late to make the movie. A philosophy which helps to explain why Creatures turned into a musical. We had a lot of musical costumes and wardrobe from a couple shows here in Las Vegas. Plus we had a lot of music that a friend of mine, Libby Quinn, wrote. And we found during the making of the movie that it wasn't really wasn't looking like an MGM musical. I mean, we didn't have to work at it to make it look that bad, but, you know, nevertheless, it, it turned out that way because all the girls were out of step and so forth in the musical numbers, but they didn't have any time to really rehearse. It was like do or die, and so we shot like six or seven numbers in one day without rehearsal time, so I thought they did a great job. Again, we're getting back to my formula. What do we have before we start the movie? Not what we have to look for. In that one, he stabbed me with a knife. I, I was done in on quite a few of the films. A lot of our friends used to say, Carol, I think he's trying to tell you something. If there's a lesson to be learned, it's never marry a director. Here we see Carolyn, playing a dancer, being brutally murdered by Ray's leading man, the hypnotized Cash Flag. <coughs> kids you know can be hypnotized to go out and murder people I mean really it's not too much upstairs but you know the funny thing is a lot of people identified with him through the years I guess this was cash flag yeah cash flag yeah he's a nice guy he's hard to work with though uh, he gets a little temperamental once in a while you gotta straighten him out look can we change the subject all right but I sure would like to know what happened after I left <coughs> As you can see, it doesn't take much to trigger cash off, but hypnotism was also a gimmick that Ray employed to publicize the film. We had uh, uh, some sort of hypnotic eye working for a while where we would tell people that they would become hypnotized and drawn into the movie. Open your eyes, Jack. We got a lot of uh, flack on that because uh, no. some people were, you know, they see this spinning wheel and actually they start to get hypnotized. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people can be put to sleep so easily by something that's just repetitious like a spinning wheel. We had uh, some hypnotic uh, group come in while we were shooting and they made us take the little circle on the spinning wheel and, and mess it up. If you look closely on the film, it looks terrible because we put some black masking tape or gaffer's tape on it so that it would not uh, hypnotize people in the audience. I mean, they were really upset with us when they saw what we were doing because they were always afraid that we give 
hypnotism a bad name. You know. And just in case the audience fell asleep watching the hypno wheel, Ray had another trick up his sleeve. We woke him up. We woke him up. You know, we had live monsters jumping onto the stage and out of the screen and on off the stage into the audience. He, he had that in Incredibly Strange Creatures. Oh, yeah. In fact, a couple times, Ray himself was in the monster suit. One time he nearly got pelted to death, I think. <laughs> This was the point in the movie when the live monsters would break loose, as Ray's long-suffering producer, George Morgan, recalls. These monsters come out on the stage and the light comes on them, and they come down the audience, a lot of screaming. We had a girl in the front row, a plant, and they got her and dragged her back up on the stage and screaming. And it sold a lot of tickets. <laughs> George had first agreed to finance and produce Ray's movies because he nurtured a secret ambition. As a kid in the Midwest, you know, everybody, I guess, dreams about being in the movies. And I'd had that all these years. So before we started production, I told Ray, I said, you know, I expect a little part in this. So that's how that came about. I played the part of a drunk without a drink and uh, in the opening of the picture, and it turned out all right. And because of that, then I was given parts in other pictures. Take him and make him like my other little pet. What was I look at it? I. I, I'm no great actor or anything like that, but I sure enjoyed my work. George finally made it as a big-time Hollywood producer. Well, at least that's what they cast him as in their next movie, The Thrill Killers. Hey, you forgot my breakfast this morning. Not exactly. You remember Mr. Morgan? Oh, hello, Liz. Mr. Morgan, this is Liz's cousin, Linda. Hi. I'm very happy to know you, Linda. George is a producer, and he's looking for a location for his next film. Since Liz was up here, I thought I'd bring him up and show him your diner. Ah, this is the greatest. Just what I've been looking for, Joe. Beautiful. I mean, he was a very nice man. He didn't interfere much with anything that I did. I don't think he ever understood what I was doing. And, you know, today he's, he's still amazed that people like the movies. And I tried to thoroughly convince him just the other day the reason that people like him more today is more people are, they, they've seen him today, they're, they're exposed to him. Where in those days, we didn't get the exposure like home video will do today in television. Had more people seen our movies earlier, it might have changed the whole course of our careers. I mean, that's what it's all about, you know. Fame is the name of the game. Thrill Killers, starring Cash Flag as Mad Dog Click. Kill crazy psychopathic maniac who would do anything for a kick. So how did you discover Cash? Uh, every time I turned around on the set, Cash was there. I mean, it was, was kind of strange, you know. No matter where I went, there was old Cash Flag. He hasn't worked with many other people, has he? Anyway. No, nobody can put up with him. I mean, you've seen the Cash Flag movies. Would you mess around with this guy? Oh, no. No, no. way. Yeah, he's, you know, he can Horrible, be... Horrible, beady little eyes. I know, they're just, like, just awful. Just like piercing. Semi-Oriental, maybe. I don't know. Can I give you a lift? Don't! 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 Cash, what was Ray like to work for as a director? Who? Ray, Dennis Declan, I believe you worked with him on many of his films. That's the only person I ever worked for. I won't work for anybody else. Why is that? I don't trust them. Hollywood people, producers, they don't pay. You know that, don't you? You're an actor. Do you get paid? Sometimes. Am I getting paid for this? <laughs> if you think that one cash flag is hard to take, you wouldn't have liked the gimmicks Steckley used to sell the movie. Driving audiences were terrorized by cinema staff wearing cash flag masks and wielding rubber axes. This poor guy came running up to my car, knocked on my window wearing a cash flag mask and saw me and I thought he was going to die. I mean, I just thought he, poor guy, was going to die. He, he just says, I don't believe it, I don't believe it, you know. 
So I had to go actually out into the concession afterwards and sign some autographs, about eh, seven or eight at least, I think, you know. But it was a good crowd, and it was a good gimmick, because it was kind of expensive to go across the country, and we found that uh, you could have a cash flag in every city in America if you really wanted one. Uh, there's a rumor in Hollywood that, in what fact... What rumor? That, in fact, you and Wei are one and the same person. No. Oh. Nah, he's more like that guy in the Lemon Grove Kids, you know, the funny one with the baseball hat, the big nose. Gopher. Gopher! Here's Gopher in action in the Lemon Grove Kids, a series of short films which follow the adventures of a gang of misfits. Like many of Stector's pictures, they have the look and feel of an accomplished home movie, held by the fact that they were shot in his backyard and feature his family and friends. If you work with me or in any capacity, you have to be prepared to be in the movies, whether you want to or not. I think all my movies are home movies. That's what people say. They say, you know, because I make most of them at, at home, wherever I live. All the places I've lived through the years are in all my films, right from the very beginning. They, some of them don't exist anymore, but they're there, all my old cars, all my old wardrobe. And perhaps even his old spaceships. You can't fault him for his imagination. slightly bigger home movies. Is that how they were made? <laughs> Pretty much so. When you're working on the incredibly small limited budgets that we did, they were just about that. And you will see the repertory company of Ray Dennis Steckler in these films. So who formed the company? It was all the gang that hung out around with us. And it was Ray's magnetism that drew them to him. <laughs> Out of all of Ray Dennis Steckler's bizarre movies, this is my personal favourite. Starring Ron Haydock as singing idol Lonnie Lord and Ray's ex-wife Carolyn as his girlfriend C.B. Beaumont, it's the world's first rock and roll thriller. You is a rat, fate, you is a rat, fate. If I had a nickel for every time you've let me down, you know beyond the shadow of a doubt. I'd be the wealthiest of man in town. I've got my name for you because it's what you is. You is a rat thing. You is a rat thing. Now let's talk about Rat Fink and Boo Boo because it's it's actually called Rat Fink and Boo Boo. But on the film itself it says Rat Fink A Boo Boo. Now why is that? Well, that's because we we had a budget of about four or five thousand dollars when we were making the movie. And that came in in pieces. And when we did the titles when the movie was over, the, the artist misspelled instead of Rat Fink and Boo Boo, he wrote Rat Fink a Boo Boo. And I just didn't have another $30 to change it. So that's it forever. It stays. People like it, Rat Fink a Boo Boo. I mean, everywhere you go, people say Rat Fink a Boo Boo. You know? <laughs> The film starts as a tense thriller, with CB being terrorised and then kidnapped by a mysterious gang. Hello. CB Beaumont. <sighs> Who are you? What do you want with me? Look out the door, CB Beaumont. Look out the door. Who can save her? Stay tuned for the answer in part two.
Welcome back. The story of Rat Finker Boo Boo so far. Lonely Lord's girlfriend, C.B. Beaumont, has been kidnapped by the ruthless chain gang. And the question is, who can save her and how? We've got ourselves a little problem. What are we going to do, Lonnie? They've got C.B. and you can't get the money by tonight. What are we going to do? Titus, there's only one thing we can do. When you were making the movie, it looks as though there were two films just joined together in the middle. What actually happened? Ah, well, you mean because it's neither fish nor fowl? You mean in the first half we have stark realism and suspense, and the second half we have a lot of fun? I got bored with the movie when we were making it, so I just decided to change it. And that's the truth. I just got bored the way we were doing it. I <laughs> says, we're not getting anywhere with this picture. Let's do something that people will remember. This is a job for you know and who. Awesome. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I can do a few pounds, Titus. I was just going to do that. You're standing on my foot, Titus. And who's standing on mine? I'm doing my best to get ready. Uh, the door seems to be stuck, Titus. Oh, oh sorry. Have you locked this in again? <laughs> Help me, Titus. Wait, I'm charging my battery. <clears throat> Red Saint and Boo Boo. Friends to those who have no friends. Enemies of those who make them an enemy. Champions of women and children everywhere. Red Saint, mysterious mass nemesis of hoodlums and racketeers the world over. And Boo Boo, by day, a mild-mannered gardener. By night, the scourge of the underworld. Red Fink and Boo Boo. Together they blaze a four-fisted campaign against the enemies of truth, justice, and the American way of life. Remember, Boo Boo, we only have one weakness. What's that, Red Fink? Mm, bullets. Now let's go to fight crime. Transformed into the crime-fighting heroes Ratfink and Boo Boo, the chase is on. And what a chase it is. You sit through 40 minutes of three psychos terrorizing a girl on the telephone and then tracking her down and kidnapping her and then all of a sudden Batman and Robin come to the rescue while the house just goes crazy. Because they're so bored that first 40 minutes <laughs> that this is real escapism when the guys come out of the closet with their costumes on. 20 minutes later, our superheroes are still chasing the mysterious and long-forgotten kidnappers. before crossing a street. And there was only so much we could do with what we had, and I felt this great chase, I mean, an exciting chase at 35 miles an hour would just hold the audience, you know, for, for hours at a time. They, they couldn't wait to come back to see the picture. It was kind of one of those things like the great race, let's see how far we can extend this joke and keep it going and build upon it. And I think, especially coming in toward the end, with the uh, gorilla and his keeper really added an extra dimension to it. <laughs> Ape, drop that girl. Kogar worked for nothing, and I couldn't, I couldn't pass up that, that situation, you know, a free, a free gorilla. Now, Kogar, quit playing around. is unlike any other film I've seen. How did people react when they first saw it? We only ever had the picture reviewed twice. Box Office gave it a great review for some reason. I, I think the guy didn't show up from Box Office and just wrote a nice review because he liked me. 
But the critic from Variety, he had, uh, he sat through this whole movie, and I think he went through at least three packs of cigarettes in a non-smoking section of the theater. He was so nervous, uh, I don't know what his problem was, and when he came out, he couldn't quite make up his mind about the movie <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Perhaps Stecker's greatest strength is to utilize whatever's available at the time of shooting his films. He hijacked this local parade, for example, to honor Ratfink and Boo Boo. Parades have lots of people in production, so we go out and jump in the parade and, and photograph it just as it's happening. I mean, of course, people wondered who those guys were in the parade, Rat Fink and Boo Boo. They, to this day, I'm sure it... Can you imagine 1964, I guess it was, that people saw Rat Fink and Boo Boo in that parade, and probably to this day, 25 years later, they're still wondering who they were? <laughs> support yourself when you're making these movies was presumably they didn't make enough money to keep you going oh my movies god if i had to live on what i made in my movies it'd be that'd be it to be all over uh no i've worked as a cameraman all my life i've been a still photographer movie photographer since day one that was that's that's my forte so i've always worked for other people consistently through the last 30 years in that in that vein but uh you know i've also owned furniture companies video stores uh, i mean i like work i don't like to sit around doing anything Ray continues to direct films, but nowadays he prefers to work under the alias of Wolfgang Schmidt. Movies like Blood Shack and The Hollywood Strangler Meets the Skid Row Slasher are typical of the darker, bleaker, more violent films he's made since moving to Las Vegas. This is a transit town and so many things happen here consistently that people aren't aware of because people come and go. So it has the makings of a night city and night films, dark films, and I like to capture the Las Vegas Strip or downtown Fremont Street, or I'm fascinated on my new movie, which is the tentative title. This is, what am I gonna call it tonight? I gotta come up with a title, right? This is a first. Uh, how about Dark Alleys in a Well-Lit City? You like that? <laughs> That's good, I don't care. Okay. I'm glad to see that. Maybe we'll keep that one. We'll shoot a scene tonight for you, okay? Dark Alley, roll one, scene one, take one. Okay, action, go! History in the making. You're watching the first night shooting of a brand new Ray Dennis Steckler movie. And, as you might expect, the location is the parking space behind Ray's office. Good, good shot, good shot. What was this thing you hit your own fist? Oh, you seen that? Yeah, I look well, kind of... the other takes, that's how I knocked her down, to knock her out. Oh, well, you're helping us again, huh? Yeah. But look good, you know. I'm... So wait, we might leave that in. You got such a small camera here. How come you such a small camera? It's a small budget. Yeah, but couldn't you just hire a bigger one? Or... No, you if you get a bigger camera, then you got to have a bigger crew, then you have the bigger cast, and then you have to have a bigger set, and then you get a big mouth like you walking in, and nothing gets done, Jonathan. Well, wait, I've got to make a show here, but far be it for me to tell you your own business, but if a guy's going around killing people, would he really have the word killer written on the back of his jacket in big letters? I'm average. Well, come over here for a second, let's have a look at it. Well, I'm gonna... it, kind of, it kind of gives the game away a bit, don't you? Jonathan, Jonathan. You know, the police are going to say, you know, we're looking for a guy with killer I have a movie. Wait, can I jacket. talk? Will you let me talk? <laughs> I have a movie named The Thrill Killers that nobody ever bought any cassettes. It's a good film, though. I like yeah, it. Yeah, but it's 25 years old. But this way, I can advertise it with a new movie. People will say, what about The Thrill Killers? Where can I get that? They can buy them both at the same time. I understand now. That's funny. Ron, what parts have you played in Ways movies? Uh, well, I started out playing a petty criminal and mugger, and now I've graduated to a full-fledged woman killer. You're kind of working your way up? Yep, working my way up. What films have you been in? Uh, the Las Vegas Serial Killer, uh, The Slasher, and this one. So how long have you known Ray for? About four or five years now. And how did you get together with him? Uh, I went out to his home and repaired his air conditioner, and he said he thought I should be a star. Stand by. Okay, action. <laughs> Wait, 
What, what are you doing? What are you? This angle because I can what? see that she rolls out the way when the knife comes in. What are you do, doing? Do you coach these people to? Did, can I, give you I coach them how to perform correctly. What are you doing over there? It's fascinating to watch that. I mean, you know, obviously on a limited budget, I suppose you, you just don't have time to rehearse that much. But they all seem to know what they're doing. They know what they're doing if you would just let them alone. I was, we were looking for a script earlier to try and find a script, and we couldn't find one line. A script? The, uh... A script? <laughs> on a Stackler film, the I was script? having to have a read of it before we... Here, here. You want to find a script? Here, you just take your time. Right? Go through here. <laughs> Here's one from Stop and Go, one from McDonald's. There's more dialogue on that cup than any one of my movies. Well, I work as grip or whatever. I'm the crew, practically. So what makes you work with him? Does he pay well? Oh, I love it. He's just a great guy. No, oh, no, he doesn't pay. Sometimes he pays. If he's got the money, he pays, you know. If he gets $100, we rent more lights, and, uh, you know, that's that's where we do things. Great. I cut, Jonathan, because I know you're going to walk in the shot. How about, how about how I jump in the car I next can't afford the film, huh? Because I'm like a kind of sidekick or something. Huh? <laughs> so maybe... I mean, what I, I, we actually whack Fink and Boo Boo. You know, this could grown be... Grown up. <laughs> what? Grown we, up? We don't have the clothes anymore, but grown we up? still help people. Oh, oh all right. Like this girl here. Yeah, okay. okay. You better check with him first. I'm important. Is that okay with you? Your fancy Morgan. sidekick? Yeah. Maybe I should rephrase that. You have a knife? <laughs> you have a knife? No, I don't, but I... You don't have a knife. knife. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but we're going to do something with you, John. Okay, yeah. We're going to, I'm going to put you... Could I do a scene with you? Could I put you in my movie? No, I'd, I'd love to. I have the funny feeling that's you? what you've been waiting around for. Can I help for? you in any way? Well, I've got to admit, I'm a bit excited. It's finally going to happen. I'm going to star in a big budget Holly... Well, a small budget Las Vegas movie. But I'm kind of looking forward to it. And Ray said he's got a, a plum part picked out for me. Yeah, and I still haven't seen a script. Although everyone does seem to know what they're doing. Well, sort of know what they're doing. Anyway, I'm just going to go and get on with it. And uh, who knows, it's a dream come true for this young boy. Pierre, I need you on your mark. So now the minute they shake hands, you go in. Don't wait, okay? The minute they shake hands. Okay? Everybody ready? You ready? Okay. Here we go. Stand by. Okay. Uh, no, we're, we're okay. Harry, just start right here. Would you? Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Right here. Don't get the time to it, okay? We're reacting here. Okay, action. Go ahead. Look at the girl. Good. Okay, Pierre, they're going to shake hands. Shake hands. That's good, okay? Jonathan, make your move. Then he goes for his keys, guys. Go in. Look at him, Jonathan. Take your stick your money, man. Where the hell is where, it? Where? 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 Okay, let's go. Get him, man. Right, I got him. Go. I got him. You should have looked down on my hat. <laughs> great, that's a great, that's no, great, Joe. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's all wet. It's all wet. Money is good if it's wet. Money for Phil, money for Phil. <laughs> Put it dry. See, it's wet money, isn't it? It's going to stick yeah, I, to I, your I, head. I, we, we, we took the country away from you. I can't take the money. <laughs> Thanks. Do you want something to dry it off with? No, I'll be okay, Chuck. Don't worry. I think... Uh, and there you go. A star is born, a legend in the making. A movie coming to a video store near you sometime soon. I'm just going to go and read some scripts. Ray, I must thank you for the uh, opportunity to get mugged in your new movie. Be honest, Mimi, what did you think of my performance? I thought it was great. I mean, really great. I mean, if I ever make another Lemon Grove kid film, you're going to get one of the parts of one of the kids. You know, you have that childlike presence about you, which I think is really neat, you know. Besides, I liked all those $100 bills you had in the hat. That, was, that would come in handy, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, leave a few here when you leave, okay? So when can we hope to see Dark Alley in the shops or in the cinemas? Uh, I, I think we'll have it ready sometime around September, October. I don't see why not, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll coincide with your release in this. When are you going to put this out, August? Yeah. August, okay. Well, super. Let's not mention years. That way you can replay this show over and <laughs> over again. Go, go, Ray Dennis Steckler is one of the true eccentrics of American cinema, a status confirmed by the kind of oddball fans attracted to events like this, a rare late-night screening of some of his early masterpieces here in Los Angeles. 
Can you tell us what you're doing here tonight? Well, let me tell you something, my friend. The devil took a parking meter, gave it arms and legs, and named it Ray Dennis Steckler. And I'm here tonight to feed that parking meter. So that's what I'm doing here tonight. Now, do you get people coming to see these films in particular? I mean, do they know about Ray Dennis Steckler? Oh, quite a bit. Yeah, there's, he's got quite a fan club all over the world. And uh, they come from miles around to see these films when they're being shown in theaters. And how do they react? I mean, what do they like about them? Well, they're wild, they're funny, they're totally original. I mean, who ever heard of a monster musical, especially 20 years ago when these films were made in the horror scope, actually, excuse me, Terrorama. Do you think watching these movies has any adverse effects on people? Yeah, I think it brings out uh, pretty much uh, subdued psychotic tendencies that have been lying dormant for quite some time, uh, along with the smog and the general air quality in this particular region. Uh, you add that to the nitrous oxide in these tapes and you've really got something. Ow! What about these bags? These uh, this is something they used to do when we're trying to bring this back, stomach distress bags. If anyone gets violently ill or reacts to the film somewhat adversely, free stomach distress bags. Is that really likely to happen, Don? It could be. Some people could react to these films very strangely. Eric? Eric? I'm running out of room. How many times have you seen this movie, Eric? I asked about eight or nine. Really? Yeah, it's terrific. It's what do you think about Cash Flat? It's exciting. Yeah? It's incredible. I have a strange feeling you know him very well. <laughs> I want to ask you another question about sure. incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Mainly because I just like saying the title. But also because it's your best known film. Yeah. Now, when you were making it at the time, did you realise you were making something that was special and that would last and still have a following 20 years afterwards? Well, I, I felt that way. I, I feel that way about all the films that I did in that era. I mean, even the Thrill Killers. I mean, I felt that Rat Fink and Boo Boo, the Lemon Grove Kids, they all were unique. And if you try to make something unique, I think in the long run you're going to be better off, it's going to last longer. I mean, there are multi-million dollar movies made every year that uh, they play for a week in a theater and they play for another week on videotape and that's the end of it. And why is that? I mean, I think for the most part you've, you, you've seen the movie before. I mean, Hollywood is great at making remakes of remakes and remakes because they don't have any original ideas. Then when somebody does have an original idea, everybody copies it. But maybe my movies are so bad nobody wanted to copy them. <laughs> they couldn't get Cash Flag out of retirement. That's one thing, they could not get Cash Flag. He, he just won't work for anybody else. That's it. And is it true you've retired from filmmaking? Yes. What have you been doing since your last film? I have a raft. I float on it. On the Schuylkill River, right outside of Philadelphia. Do you know what I do on that raft? No. Jonathan, do you know what I do? Huh? I look for bodies floating in the river. Do you find many? Of course, and I call Steckler up. Free extras. He likes that. Anything free. <laughs> Look at this. Look over here. We got a real cash flow. Okay, wait a second. Oh, you like the Lemon Grove kids? Yeah, I have all of them. That's fantastic. It'll be great. We want to see Goof on the Loose. That's about the only thing we haven't seen. You want to see Goof? Anybody else want to see Goof on the Loose tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I've got it. Okay. Well, how do you spell Cheryl? That is? Yeah. My biggest fans? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's really neat. How come I haven't heard that? Don't you think I know what people do with you, Miss Baby? That you dating all the guys are not mm -hmm. So how can you say that you will love a man? How can you ever be so cool? I've got the word for you because it's what you will. You is a rat thing. You is a rat thing. Yeah, the animal is a rat thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So we say goodbye to Wade Dennis Steckler and goodbye to Las Vegas. But join us next week on the incredibly strange film show when I can promise you someone who you really won't forget in a hurry. This is a very scared Jonathan Ross saying goodnight.